Okay, we're live streaming, but we still need one more member for... Ken is, Ken is in. Ken Gelnick? Yes. All right. I'm going to start recording now. Is we okay to start otherwise? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it is May 26, 2022. It is 7.05 p.m. This is the full board meeting of Community Board 11 in the Bronx. And let me share the... The agenda. Start things off with Pledge of Allegiance recited by a Sergeant of Arms. If everybody else could please stay muted. In fact, why don't I just mute everyone? Or I should give Chris, um, Chris, I'm going to make you a co host so you can help me with this. I forgot to do that. So, muting all. I may meet myself and Oral will um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. When you're ready, Oral, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, um, sure. you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. And next, we're going to have a um, uh, Jeremy Wright, a moment of silence for um, our fallen first responders and medical and military service personnel and all the victim of state sponsored aggression, COVID-19, racial and social injustice in the United States. But I also want to have a um, moment of silence for moment of silence for the um, 19 young school children and two teachers that were killed in the elementary school in uh, Uvalde, Texas, Uvalde, Texas, which, you know, I don't know if people are watching it, it's not making sense anymore to me. Um, gun violence is out of control, as we see even in New York City. And some of the, you know, people are claiming that New York City and other places have had the same amount of violence, but they don't realize it. But they probably do realize it that they're getting the guns not from New York City, right? They're getting it out of town, other places where you can buy, you can easily get guns and bring them into New York City. So until something happens, until I, I'm not sure what, what to say anymore about this. It's, it's totally Excuse me. doesn't make any sense anymore. So um, let's have a moment of silence, please, for everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Jeremy, it's on you. Okay. Thank you. So let me stop sharing the screen. Uh, we had we have two elected officials in. Uh, Councilmember Riley was here first. So if you don't mind, Senator Councilmember, could you please go first? If you would like to, um, we give you five minutes, right? Because we do have time is precious. Your time is precious. So we're gonna give you five minutes. And then questions and comments from board members thereafter. Uh, Jeremy, respectfully, if I if I may defer to my colleagues, uh, Senator Biaggi, to go first, uh, just for deference on um, purpose. That's okay, Council Member, you can go. Oh, thank you, Senator Biaggi. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's truly uh, amazing to be here today. I'm sorry I'm outside in my car waiting for my niece because she's going to graduation today. I'm mean, excuse me, prom today. She's uh, graduating from Cardinal Spellman. Uh, she's really doing our prom, so I'm waiting for her to take her to our prom. Uh, but one to make sure I come uh, tonight to give greetings to you all. And first, I, I really want to thank you uh, for the work that you all have been doing for the community board. Uh, I myself, working in government for the last uh, decade, realized how much community board members who don't get compensated for this job, uh, the work that you do is really tremendous to us. Uh, my office always uh, goes to the community board whenever we get any issues. I um, always want to get your uh, point of view when we're trying to address certain concerns within the community. Uh, so just wanted to express my gratitude for the working relationship uh, that Jeremy has had with my office uh, and other members of the community board. Uh, I know Jamal Yap, who's my deputy chief of staff, 
I usually attend these meetings, I believe, tonight. Uh, that being said, uh, I know Orrell, uh, uh, Mr. Orrell mentioned something uh, regarding gun violence, so I guess I'll just uh, pick off from there. And uh, speaking about the violence within our community uh, is something that we're really trying to address. Uh, it needs to happen from a federal level when we need to stop the guns from coming within our community. But something we've been doing local uh, is doing more community outreach uh, where we're trying to connect with different people in the community to help us uh, connect with the youth uh, within the district and figure out what they need. We did something in East Chester Gardens where I know uh, is in uh, this, uh, Community Board 11, uh, which I represent when we bought NYC Speaks uh, to District 11 uh, to East Chester Gardens. And if you guys remember a few years ago, we had that huge gang bus uh, in uh, East Chester Gardens. And now uh, a lot of those people are coming out and they're trying to figure out what to do. A lot of them are ta talented when they do music. So we did bring uh, the founder of Rough Riders out there to have a conversation with a lot of the youths and think of a program that we could bring to the development so we could kind of keep them engaged. They are going to be getting uh, upgrade to their community center, which is going to be starting very soon. It's supposed to be projected to start at the end of the year. And I did give money last year to upgrade the playground. I'm really big on different schools and different public um, locations within the district. I know this is not the answer for gun violence, but I'm really trying to connect our youth from different parts of the community because what I've been observing is a lot of the issues that are happening within our districts are our youth having issues with other people that live within the district uh, that I represent. So I'm trying to connect them in different ways and fashions and also trying to get the legwork done uh, I'm working with uh, the tenant and resident, I'm excuse me, the resident association president in East Chester Gardens, Keith Ramsey. But I'm also working with uh, a lot of the local people within the community. Uh, William Gray, I'm not sure if you guys know who that is. He's a resident of East Chester um, Gardens. A very, very dope individual. He connects with the youth. So he's been working with us. We're actually helping him out to do a resource fair this weekend where we're going to be providing jobs. Uh, just a view, uh, fun community element for the people inside East Chester Gardens. Uh, but I'm not going to take too long. I know Jeremy said I have five minutes. I don't want to be uh, too long because I know people may have some questions. Um, but just to uh, just give you guys a, uh, some other perspective, I am the chair of zoning and franchising. I know you guys uh, have been dealing with a big, big uh, zoning issue uh, that is that you guys voted on uh, recently. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there, and I always uh, try to keep connected uh, with the community board to see what the concerns are. We did have a meeting uh, regarding this uh, prior to you, uh, the developers presenting. Uh, so I did get the feel of how the community felt about this. So with that being said, I just wanted to kick it back to you, Jeremy, in case uh, anything else. Thank you. Or remember, we have we allowed that was, that was perfect. That was perfect, Riley. That was, you had fifty three seconds left. Perfect. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, so oral, we remember we get we can allow four questions or comments from board members. Unless we waive the rules. Yes, I understand. Anybody? Questions, comments? For the council member, so he represents largely East Chester Gardens area for us. Yes. Well, you know, I had a comment since you didn't mention it, and um, you know, I want to stay on this topic because of of the gun violence. And what do you see happening about trying to stop guns from coming into New York City? Because the, the kids are getting it, they bring it in, in into New York City. Because I know, growing up in the Bronx, going to school, I went to, I, I know how guns got it got into New York City. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like I had friends that had friends, family members in Virginia, whatever, and they would go there and bring them back. And because um, it was easy access to get guns out there in Texas, wherever you need to go to and bring them back to, to New York City, bring them to Chicago. You know, I don't want anybody to be fooled by, oh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's any way you have uh, laws, it doesn't help because New York City has one of the most stringent laws, but still things are happening because other states do not have that. So they're getting the guns there and coming back to New York City with them. Anyway, so I wanted to find out what what's happening, um, uh, Congressman Riley. What, what what's what do you think is going on with with that? Well, I know, I know a lot guns. of it. Thank you, Oral, for that uh, comment and the question. Uh, can you hear me well? I, I know my service is not um, well. All right, thank you. Uh, I know a lot of the issues with the gun, guns these days are uh, is the ghost guns uh, that we're hearing about now where um, people are building the guns. Um, 
I spoke with the mayor yesterday. Actually, we had uh, dinner last night where we were going over a lot of issues like the commercial trucking park, illegal parking that's going on throughout the entire New York City, uh, which we have to address as well. But I'm trying to figure out where the guns are coming from. Um, I know the state legislators are implementing legislation that will uh, try to seize or, or put a stop to some of the uh, the things that uh, individual are using to make the ghost guns. Uh, the things that I'm trying to focus on are why our kids feel the need or people feel the need to have guns uh, within the community. Uh, speaking to some of the kids that we spoke to, because I'm doing a youth summit coming up soon. Uh, um, and we had, we've been in a working group with kids, uh, crisis management uh, groups, um, and we're trying to figure out uh, real solutions. And whether some of the kids are staying right now is some of them don't feel safe. And necessarily some of them will walk around with guns because they're trying to protect themselves from other people. Uh, so trying to figure out that dynamic and fixing the issues within community is something I'm trying to address. Uh, from a legislative level, I'm going to continue to fight. Uh, and I think we have a really, you know, good representatives here in the Bronx uh, from our federal levels who are pushing their colleagues, and especially our Senator, Senator Schumer, who's pushing his colleagues uh, to vote against, uh, I mean, to vote for gun reform. Uh, but that's what we're really trying to focus on right now. So I know it's not really answering your question, but that's really the focus that I'm really trying to do right now uh, with the connection of the community and trying to figure out why our kids feel the need to carry guns and try to build relationships uh, between different parts of the community. Because I even know Eastchester right now, they're having an issue. Um, I'm speaking to the NYPD officers, they must be having an issue with people in, over at Gun Hill. Uh, so we're trying to bring those two communities together to see if we could kind of bridge the gap and figure out what's going on. If I may, if I may, if I may, uh, Congressman, uh, Councilman, uh, met with yes. the, um, district attorney uh, the other evening. And one of our concerns was the fact that the laws are such that it's almost catch and release as far as the uh, pr prison system goes. People are arrested mm -hmm. for gun, a gun possession five, six times, and they're walking without bail. So that falls on you. It falls on the state legislators who made the laws. You have to sit down with the judges, you have to sit down with the DAs, and you have to sit down with the police department and come up with laws that are going to be beneficial to the people of the city. People make laws without talking to anyone first, and they make laws with the kumbaya idea, and then when it filters down to the, you know, to the working people and the people that live in the cities, all of a sudden we're suffering for it. When a person is arrested 40 or 50 times, that's not okay that that person continues to walk on the street because it's not a bailable offense because it's only petty larceny. It's a minimal amount of criminals that commit a majority of the crimes. Get those off the streets and your crime rate will go down. And the illegal guns, absolutely. The, the ghost guns, I think there's a law coming out now where those ghost guns cannot be, um, they're gonna stop them from being uh, purchased. They have to have a serial number on them from here on in. But people can buy parts and put the guns together. That's exactly what a ghost gun is. You buy the parts, you go home, and you sit down, and you put the guns together. So everyone is to blame for this. It's not just the police. It's not just the judges. It's also the lawmakers. You people have to get together and come up with a policy that the people can live with. And you have to do it working together, not working in, in, in uh, you know, by, your, by, by your lonesome and, and figuring out what's best for the community. First deal with the community, talk to the community, talk to the police, talk to the, um, the lawmakers and the, the people that have to um, – make sure the laws are carried out, and then make your laws. I mean, this bail, the bail reform was wrong. It was wrong from the get-go, and 90% and of the people will tell you that. Take a poll and you'll find out. But you still insist on, on continuing it. So I'm, I'm sorry, but that's, uh, I needed to say that. No, and I respect your opinion, um, Al. And bail reform and those laws came from the state legislators. Um, I think the percentage of people that are getting released uh, that are doing these crimes is a real small percentage. Uh, I think when they put out the a report I saw about a few months ago, they said about 6% are being rearrested. So it's a real small percentage, but I think the way it's being portrayed out there is that stated, we do have to work together. Uh, I think that's what I try to do. 
Uh, I want to make sure we're doing a collaborative effort and I want to make sure that we have this relationship moving forward. Um, so I'm going to continue to to work with my colleagues in government to make sure we're addressing these issues. Okay. I well, think some, go ahead. Thank you. Juanita wanted to say something? Yeah, I think Juanita wants to say something. Hi, Hi everyone. Good evening. Councilman, how are you? This is Juanita. How you doing, Juanita? Hi. Um, I just want to thank you for continuously coming out to East Chester. I do, you know, do a lot. Juanita, you're, Juanita breaking you're, up. you're breaking up. It's hard to hear you. You hear me now? Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit better, but yes, you're breaking yes, up every now and then. Okay. I was um, saying thank you for always showing up to East Chester when we are doing events and, you know, being that that fourth person to come there and show your face and, you know, we, we voted for you and you're there helping bridging that gap. So we just want to thank you for, you know, showing up no. there. Thank you, Juanita. Okay, very good. Um, anyone else uh, want to have a comment or, or say anything? No, um, I have just one more thing to say. I'm not going because I, I, this can go on forever. I know it can, but it's it's something that's really close to my heart right now because this gun this gun violence is really getting ridiculous. I'm wondering if I know um, Councilman Riley, we can set up a meeting to discuss ways to address all of the things you're 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 you're, 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 you're talking about. We're talking about kids, kids in our community not having a direction, right? And there's so many other factors that go into the reasons why things are the way they are, right? There's mentorship, there's just generational educational, generational wealth, generational knowledge about how to, to make it in, in this world, especially in New York City. It's very difficult navigating New York City growing up as, as, as a child. And when you're in a neighborhood that's 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 riddled with um, services that not it's not really helping your community. That's another problem. So there's so many things, so many factors that happen to a child growing from birth until 18 and then by 18 and 16, 18 or even 15. Now it becomes too late. There's also mental mental health issues that in the in many communities under un, underserved communities. Children are not getting the services that other communities get for mental for right. mental health. So there's so many factors. I know I've been doing research. My son's my son's is is, is a medical school in Chicago. He's done this the research there. Um, and he, he he's a medical student at at U Chicago, and um, there's so many factors that are going into, and and Chicago, Chicago has a similar issue. So and well, we as the community really well, need to for talk the sake and discuss. Of brevity, I think we should. Uh, I think your idea is a good one, where we should turn around and get a committee together to meet. Yeah, I think that's the best idea. I, uh, otherwise, we'll go on all night tonight. You're right. You're right. Al. Uh, You're right. Al. But but I but like like I said, I'm very passionate about what's going on here because it is concerning. I don't know if anyone under that is not really concerned about that. To me, that's a problem. Anyway, that's all. Mr. Orell, anytime you want to meet or anyone else who want to meet, we could definitely do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That. Appreciate we'll, that. we'll take you up on it, uh, Council. Thank you. Thank you for showing up tonight. We really appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. Take care. Happy Memorial Weekend. You too. Uh, Senator Biagi, you still with us? I'm here. You're, you're, Oral, are you ready? <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Perfect. No, we, we, we cannot see you. Now, now we see you. You can see me or you cannot see me? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Can. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. You, you yeah, can yes, see me. Yes, okay, we can yes, see you. We can. Okay, because my video is on. Okay, great. Wonderful. Um, so let me just um, dovetail into what I was going to end with and start with this because um, it really is hard to focus on, frankly, anything else right now um, other than what has been going on. And in the, and the fact that in, the, in a matter of 10 days, um, there were four mass shootings. Um, of course, we know Buffalo, and obviously we know what happened in Texas. Um, but what it feels like, and I just, I really think it's important to put a voice to this, is like this will continue to go on forever unless there are unusual and different and unique ways of addressing gun violence. And it is 
I think important, um, in my opinion, just thinking about New York's role in this and what we can do. Yes, we passed a law that bans ghost guns. And yes, we passed laws that make it really hard for someone um, to get a license to carry a gun. And yes, we've made it so that we have the strongest and most strict gun laws in the entire country. Um, however, we can pass all the laws that we want, but if they are not shared widely amongst the community, and when I say community, I also mean um, in trainings with law enforcement, in trainings um, with those who are meant to carry them out, if we are not, not doing um, things like ensuring that we have consistent gun buyback programs, but also really focusing on what happens before the gun goes off because i think it's important and i you know we were getting to this but i really want to just go right into it which is this so much of our conversation and it should be because this is there's no act i don't even have any words left to say anymore because i just don't there's nothing else to say everything has been said and now we have to do something about it but so much of the conversation is focused on what happens after the gun goes off instead of before the gun goes off and both are important but we also, especially those of us who are in office and who are in the community and who are fighting every single day for funding and for things that really matter, need to continue to focus the conversation equal parts on the fact that communities are safe when people are housed, communities are safe when schools are funded, when they have the resources that they need, when they have after school programs because kids get into trouble between the hours of three and five more than almost any other time of the day, making sure that we actually have a mental health expert at every public school. There is no reason why we do not have that. We have enough resources in this state that we are putting to things like stadiums and other, and, and other places where frankly, I don't think are a priority because the reality is that if we do not put as much attention on this issue, it is going to not only grow, but it is going to get much, much worse. I, I am, I am really, I think at a, at a point here where even though we are about to pass another package of gun safety laws and, and really be creative about how we're addressing gun violence and think about and try to anticipate how will the Supreme Court rule on New York's concealed carry? Because for those of you that don't know, the Supreme Court right now is about to make a decision on a case about New York's concealed carry laws that will basically um, overturn New York's concealed carry laws so that people can go and walk through New York City with guns. And it's insane. And it's completely, um, it's completely, I think, out of um, our ability to understand how this can go on. And so I, I, I'm, I, I'm really struggling in the past few days for words because I find this to be just a challenge that I have never really been faced with or any of us have been faced with. But I want to just acknowledge that um, when we talk about this issue, I really want us to focus on both parts. I want us to focus on how do we deal with the trauma after the gun goes off and how do we prevent that gun from getting in that child's hand or that person's hand. Um, and it really does a lot of the time go back to resources. So. Just getting back to um, a few things that I wanted to mention. Um, again, I mentioned that the session is, uh, is just about to end next week is the final week of session. And so we are about to pass a whole bunch of bills um, and we will be having a gun um, package of legislation that we really do believe will make our laws stronger and, and really get at the heart of the issue. Um, but again, it, it really will not be um, clear to us what actions we can take with regard to the Supreme Court opinion until that decision is made. And so the legislature might have to come back over the summer or in the fall, whenever the opinion is released to address that. Um, in terms of boots on the ground and in the community, um, over the past few weeks, we've done um, three key things I just wanna focus on and then one event coming up that I think will be really relevant to the board members as well as those who are here tonight. Um, and I'll get to the last one in a second. The first is that on uh, May 14th, we presented the Albanian American Open Hand Association um, to honor their eighth anniversary um, for all of the volunteers who we've worked really closely with um, to provide food for more than 1,500 people, um, especially during the peak of the pandemic, but it really hasn't stopped. Um, earlier in the week, we also partnered with Assembly Member Fernandez's office in Allerton for another food giveaway, even though we are um, very well versed now in COVID. Uh, food 
need and food scarcity is still one of the greatest needs that we experience in my office every single day. It is the one of the highest requests in addition to housing and help with housing. Um, you know, lastly, I will just say that on there's a few other things, but it's really not even necessary to go through right now. I can put them in the chat um, on June 15th. My office will be hosting a town hall around bail reform. The reason we're doing this is because for me, this is a very important issue to have the facts around and we will open the forum and in a way where we can have a respectful dialogue about the topic and also talk about the things that the legislature has done to amend the law in working with both law enforcement, with judges, with DAs around the state, and other community members that have really voiced their opinion about the need for addressing um, repeat offenders, which is addressed in the bail reform law. So that will be on June 15th, and I ask that you please save the date for that, um, and please attend if this is something that you care about, because it is important that we have a conversation around this um, that includes the facts. And so um, I will stop there. There's a, I have at least another page of information to share with you, but I will not do that. Um, I will put the information in the chat. I really do encourage you to share it with anybody that you think beyond yourself would want to be there. Um, and I will stop at that. I don't know how long I have left, but I think that's I think that's okay. It's okay. You went over, but I, but you had yeah. some, a lot of interesting things. With all, with all so thank you very respect. much. Uh, yeah, we do have one of the toughest gun laws in the country. Yeah, laws are not enforced. So you can have you can make as many laws as you wish. If yeah. those laws are not enforced by the judges and and DA's office, it's mute. So I know. you know all the all the tough laws. I mean, we have the toughest ourselves in Chicago have the toughest gun laws in the country. Yet we have the highest murder rate uh, in the country also. So yeah. uh, how do you how do we equate that? Al, well, I, I I I discussed it already. We we you know you know what's going on. If you if you understand how guns move around in these in these cities. Do you understand what's going oh, yeah. on? I asked that question to the senator, please. Here's one thing I can just say about that specifically. Um, I think that one of the most surprising things I learned this year was that the judges in New York State from OCA, the Office of Court Administration, um, had really not been properly trained on the bail reform laws. Um, I know that because I'm a member of the Judiciary Committee in the state senate um, and i work very closely with the chair senator brad hoyleman from manhattan who made that point and made that really clear that's a problem because like you said we can pass all the laws in the world that we want to but if the people who are meant to enforce the law are not even fully briefed or well versed <laughs> it is impossible for us to get the results that actually change the way in which our communities are safe or the ways that our laws are administered. And so that is something that we worked on, at least with the, the Office of Court Administration. But beyond that, one thing that is really, really bothering me, I was gonna say bugging me, but it's more than that. It's really bothering me is that we passed a law in 2019. It's, it's referred to as a red flag law. It's called the Extreme Risk Protection Order. What it does is this, if anybody here, and this, is, this applies to all of us, if anybody here is concerned that someone who owns a gun is a harm to themselves or to others, you can petition in a court. You can go to a court, to a judge and say, I'm here because I'm worried that, you know, Joan Smith is a harm to themselves and others. They own a gun. And I really want to make sure that that gun is no, no longer in their possession. The problem is that even though we passed that law in 2019, it has been sparsely used by law enforcement. And so now that we know this, and we unfortunately have learned this in the aftermath of the Buffalo shooting, what we are doing, and I'm doing this with uh, my colleague, Senator Kavanaugh, who was the prime sponsor on this bill, is making sure that every single police department across this state has not only the, the clear understanding of what the law is, but that they also message it to police officers in their training and also to the community so that the community members know that we each and every one of us are also empowered to use the legal system, especially as it relates to guns. And so it hasn't been used as many times as we would hope. Um, in fact, it hasn't been used that much at all, which is alarming and really scary. Um, but at the end of the day, I think this is an issue that I think it's going to have to take, it's going to require extreme measures. And I will just say, you know, right before I started talking, I was looking at the Yankees Twitter and they are stopping 
their game tonight with Tampa Bay, and they are just going to use all their communication platforms to stream information about gun violence because they said it's intolerable. That is the kind of action that is going to have to happen on, on a massive scale for 50 United States senators to say it is enough that children are getting shot in schools and killed and and communities are traumatized and so i'm sorry to have so much um emotion around it but i honestly don't know how else to be because this is it's becoming almost insufferable so right, uh, jeremy i'd like to go or al uh, thank, uh, thank you senator um here's the issue you know it's, it's sad when we see issue when we see shootings mass shootings but if you really look at the big picture right we have mass shootings if you total the numbers for new york city every week we have mass shootings you know we can have a weekend like when chicago has a weekend of 20 people shot over the weekend that's a mass shooting but it's not covered in the media as a mass shooting it's it's unfortunate that we've gotten to the point. I wish the councilman was still here to hear this, but if if I get caught with a loaded weapon, I'm going to be released from prison tonight. If I don't have a weapon and I get attacked, I will die. So which one would I pick? Get caught with a loaded weapon because of bail reform, bail laws, I can get released right away or just lose my life. You know, I think a lot of good people are now looking to get weapons for themselves because of the unfortunate violence that we have now. I did mention it to the Bronx DA that the majority of, of, uh, of cases are not indicted in the Bronx for drugs, but the, the violence goes where the drugs are. So there are a lot of pieces to this puzzle. And everybody plays a role, but as civilians, as citizens, we feel like our lives are not that important because you can see all the stray bullets hitting people. You can see all the just the innocent people getting attacked on trains, walking home, all the essential employees, those delivery uh, guys that are getting attacked, uh, the increased hate crimes. It's just bad. We need to look at the overall picture and stop trying to uh, look at it as a federal issue. Because like Al said, it's really not a federal issue if we have the most strictest uh, gun laws and we're still one of the worst. So something's wrong, something's off, it needs to be fixed. That's my comment. I appreciate your comment. There's a lot to what you've said. And I ask if, that you please come to the, um, the town hall on June 15th so we can talk more about it because I have a lot to say about that. Um, I'd like to say something. Thank you. Um, I'm going to piggyback uh, Senator on what uh, Yah had said, but also just to make a statement. A lot of uh, it, there's so much focus on the 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 laws for le for citizens to carry, and our strict gun laws. But I really feel that the majority is coming from the criminals who don't follow our laws who have their illegal guns. And I think that's the focus that needs to be focused on to actually put the two pieces together. So while things are strict for the people who are following laws, we also don't, if we don't carry, we have no protection. So that's one thing. And mm -hmm. what you were saying before with regards to our, the two things with about our our children and our community. I just want to point out that we have three communities within for the last couple of decades, Van Nest, Mars Park, and Pelham Parkway that need a community center that have mentors for our children, both young and something for our teams so they don't become drug runners. Yeah. So these are and these are necessities. I agree with you. So I just want to <laughs> state that. I appreciate that point. And also the point about um, illegal guns is a very, it's a very real and also unclear one in the sense that it, it, this is what it feels like. It feels like when you shut down a counterfeit website and it goes down and you shut it down and then it pops up in another, from another web browser. It's, it is so 
um, there's the proliferation of it is so massive and large. However, to the point that Yahweh you made about its connection to different types of activities, whether it's drugs or pick something else, I think it is important that we also look at the statistics. And this is the last thing I'll say, and, and I agree with the community center because not every school in the Bronx has after school programs or even places for their children to go. And this is something that I have said every single budget in every single year that we passed a budget in the state Senate, um, because the zip codes that have the most amount of need are the ones that don't actually have these kinds of programs in their schools or have these centers. Um, but I think at the end of the day, when it comes down to illegal guns, we are only solving in New York City between 30 and 40% of all gun violence crimes. That's insane. That statistic is too low. It is outrageous. And so why does that matter? Because our police should be able to, to fight and solve violent crimes, not respond to mental health crises. We should have people able to do that who are qualified and able and allow them to solve these violent crimes. This is my personal opinion about this. I really do think that their attention was focused on these things as a, as a full focus, that the, the percentage would be higher. Um, I really do. And obviously there's a lot of things that fall under law enforcement, um, but I'll leave it again at that because I'll have a lot to say on June 15th. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to continue to tape up time that is others time as well. So, and I also have to go to another meeting now, but thank yeah. you. I just wanted to quickly say something. This is Naomi Pemerson. I just want to quickly say something. We are not really looking at the core issues of what is going on in terms of gun violence, in terms of all the issues that we have, homelessness. We really need really good programs. We have people in legislation saying we have programs, we have this, we have this, but they're not working. And so what I was saying, what I was thinking is maybe you legislative officials can maybe make a grant or a program where you give money to the community to come up with ideas to solve these problems. Maybe you have to go into the community because what you guys are creating right now is not working. You know, children are dying. Who's, who's shooting the gun? 15 year olds, 14 year olds. That's insane. It is insane. It is insane. I think that's a very good idea. Okay, so I just remind everybody that Naomi was number four. We do four board members, right? So the has to leave anyway, right, Earl? Thank you, Jeremy, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. For Senator me. Thank you, Senator. Okay. So let me share the agenda again. I have to do it. Too many things open right now. There we go. Okay, so then we'll go back to the gallery. Uh, we haven't started the gallery yet. So when you're ready, Oral, I'll start calling on. Yeah, you can start. I'll give two minutes and uh, with a um, 30 second warning, please. Thank you. Okay, so Elisa Simmons from Homeless Remedies. Hello, Which everyone. Hello, hello, Elisa. Hi, I'll, 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 I'll my name is Elisa. Alicia. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, my name is Alicia Simmons. I am the founder of Homeless Remedies. We are a grassroots nonprofit organization, and our mission is to partner with communities to help homeless individuals achieve self sufficiency and improve the quality of life of the underserved. And one of the things that we are doing is that we are beginning to introduce ourselves to all of the community districts in the Bronx. We currently uh, work out of community district one, where we provide uh, um, food, nutritional meals, essential items, and referrals to people that are living in the street. Up to date, we have provided over 632 meals and essential items. We are self-funded. And we are looking to expand throughout the Bronx to provide support in these issues that we are facing today, uh, particularly for the underserved and the homeless individuals that Please, are um, living. Oh, look, I'm so, sorry, I can't so hear you. So uh, let me mute everybody. Sorry. All right, so 
go ahead and unmute yourself, Ms. Simmons. I can't do it. Okay. So one of the things that we've done in Community District 1, February, we had a coat drive to give to the underserved and uh, homeless individuals living in the streets. And in July, we are going to have a sneaker drive where we are giving out sneakers to people living in the street and the underserved. And we're just wanting, we want to begin to provide services throughout the Bronx just to make sure that we can begin to be the change that we want to see in the world. And I would like to thank Community Board 11 for allowing uh, me to speak and introduce our organization. Please feel free to go to our website. That is homelessremedies.org. Um, and you will see a social impact video that really showcases the work that we're doing and the founder of the organization. Thank you. Thank you. That was perfect. Okay. Unless there's any questions for Ms. Simmons, we will go on to the next gallery session speaker. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Simmons. Um, Michael Dyer. Okay, Michael, uh, Michael, you're there and whenever you're ready. I'll time you. Or 30 sec 30 second warning. Um, I just I, I didn't plan to speak on this, but um just because it's been a big huge thing. I just wanna uh point out that in all of the mass shootings um, this week, they were all um, perpetrated by people that had never been arrested before. And they were all perpetrated with legally obtained weapons. Um, just a point. Um, the second thing is, thank you very, very, very much um, for the Yankee tickets. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful night for a game. Unfortunately, it didn't go our way. But um, I wanted to say thank you to the board. Thank you, Jeremy, for uh, last minuteing that for me. Um, also, I wanted to let everybody know that I highly, highly recommend the margaritas at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And was that well attended that game? Because I want to. I was heard it wasn't that well attended. I'm going to try to see if the Yankees can tell me who exactly. Used our tickets and didn't. Um, it was, it was not full of the section we were in. Okay. Right. okay. I mean, one reason for that, so everybody knows. I know some of the Yankee Award recipients weren't happy that the on-field ceremony was canceled. We only had one confirmed uh, awardee. Um, I know Bernadette wanted to know if we got the the checks. So each Yankee Award recipient receives a seven hundred fifty dollars stipend. I have no timeline for that, um, but once we do get that stuff, maybe we can present them with a nice little citation as we did for Sergeant Pasalacqua at the precinct council breakfast this past Friday. We could do what we've done that in the past for Yankee award recipients. Maybe we could do something similar at one of our, maybe the June full board meeting. But again, I can't guarantee the Yankees will have those um, checks cut by June. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. I wanted to know what the, um process was going forward so I can let everybody know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, just everybody is aware we were given 125 tickets in less than less than two weeks to to distribute them. Uh, and a lot of initial time was spent with the Yankee Award recipients who want to make sure they got their fair share of tickets. And um, one Yankee Award recipient complained about the short notice and I agreed and I emailed the Yankees. Um, hopefully we'll get more than Two weeks. Um, we didn't even have two weeks notice for this. Um, that's the person who handled this, Amanda McLean. She's left, so there's a bit of turnover there, which can explain some of it. Okay, so next gallery session speaker, um, our next. final gallery session speaker um, is it's um, Roxanne Delgado. Is that correct, Jeremy? Hello. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. We, yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, please give me a 30 second warning, uh, 30 second warning, please. Yes, we'll do. Okay, thank you so much. Well, I'd like to mention the Yankee uh, tickets. I like to say that for observations from several attendees, it seems like so people are given Yankee tickets every year and some of them could afford to buy their own tickets. And I like to say regarding the gun violence, we have to get opportunity to kids who don't have access to Yankee Stadium tickets, whose parents can't afford it, 
opportunity to attend these Yankee games because they've never been to uh, to the Yankee Stadium, sadly, especially in my community. So I myself can buy my own ticket. So that's why I didn't use that ticket because I think it's unfair. If you could pay your own ticket, why use it? Why not provide it to the people who can't afford it? Those who need it the most should be given those tickets. And I think it's uh, kind of shameful people using taking free tickets when they could buy their own tickets when there's kids in this community who who are very involved in cleaning the parkway, very involved in, in caring for their own community, translating for their parents, yet not being provided tickets to the Yankee Stadium because certain people hoard them every year. I think, you know, gifts is those who need the most. And regarding the community board uh, nomination, I hope we get new leadership because change is always good. Thank you so much. Enjoy your uh, Memorial Day. Okay. Okay. So unless there's any questions, comments, that concludes the gallery session. Let me share the agenda again. Uh, chairman's report, Albert D'Angelo. I don't know if you want me to talk about the open meetings law amendment. Um, Al, are you there? Yep. Let me just bring this up a little bit. Yeah, I can make it large. <clears throat> Excuse me. We did have a meeting. We talked about the uh, absenteeism. Uh, Jeremy, you want to talk about the uh, people that resign in lieu of uh, being called before the board? Yeah, we had two resignations. Um, I don't, I don't know if I really need to mention who resigned. Um, no, but we had two resignations. Don't mention the names. Don't mention the names. Yeah. yeah, we had two resignations recently, and then the executive board did meet earlier this month, and they did make a motion uh, that which is a recommendation to the full board. It's ultimately up to the full board to decide on uh, this particular member, um, Valerie Babb, who I don't believe she's in tonight. I did get mark everybody's attendance unless somebody called in besides Junior Campbell. I did mark Junior down. I have everybody present. I and, called in Junior, um, Jeremy Avril. Uh, Avril, okay. Yes, thanks. So is, Valerie, one night in. is Valerie Babb in? I don't believe she is. We wanted to give her a chance to, uh, we would have gone into executive session and given her a chance to explain uh, why she was absent before we put it up before uh, to a vote. But since she is not here, um, there is a motion on the floor that uh, Valerie Bob be removed for uh, for cause. The fact that she's been absent more than uh, more than five times. Jeremy, you have the number of times that uh, there was absenteeism? Um, yeah, I have it right here for the full board meeting um which is publicly on our website one two three four five last month was the fifth meeting she was unexcused and well tonight will be the six if i don't hear from her all right so the motion is on the floor that the valerie bob be removed from uh, the community board for excessive absences do i hear a second it was voted i second it all right. Well, any anybody any any discussion on this? Uh, yes, I have discussion. Go ahead. Um, I think that uh, there should be a conversation with her before there is a there, final there decision. That's Since why. It, it, that's why we wanted her to come this evening, but she didn't come. This but evening. she's not here, so I think that it should be table. I think there should be a discussion with her. Um, if she agrees that she does want to that you know she's in agreement with it then the motion you know can be brought up or uh, i don't know why don't you put a motion on the floor that we table this you know the first motion well um jeremy well, uh, can i ask what about if the person is sick and we are not aware are you aware if she's well or that's well, why i think there should be a discussion with i do not know but i know she but, was she intended on attending the executive board meeting and she did not she we have we had one person attend the executive board meeting who who explained why uh, the absences were there and we didn't bring her name up for uh, consideration because of the fact that she had legitimate excuses for her for her uh, absenteeism. Uh, we did ask Valerie to come to the meeting. She did not. So but she did say she would be here tonight as well. She said she'd be at the executive board meeting and I spoke to her afterwards because she asked me about rescheduling during the meeting. Um, and I spoke to her afterwards and she said she'd be here tonight. I, I disagree don't... with tabling it. I'd like us to proceed so we don't waste more time on members that don't want to waste time with us. Mm -hmm. I agree too. Oh. Is, there, is there going to be a table? I agree with, 
I agree with proceeding the way it, it's supposed to be. And so do I. So is so there I, any, I any, oppose. Other, any other discussion? I want to second the table. Yeah, I was already well, it was it was I already seconded. Somebody, so it's it was voted on in the executive board, so technically it doesn't need to be seconded. So Al, you, you were gonna see if there are any objections or abstention. Any anybody opposed? I'm opposed. I oppose too. Oh, we have two opposed. Bernadette and Malcolm Gray. Any abstentions? The motion carries. I let Jeremy will send a letter, please, a registered letter. So everyone else then voted in favor of the motion. Just so we're clear, only two people opposed, no abstentions. Correct. Okay. Oh, I was muted, but. Oh, Avril, you, yeah. you want to say something? Yeah, I don't know her situation, mm -hmm. so I can't. That means we can't talk. No. Jeremy, you and Campbell checking in. I've been trying yeah, to I check in. I got you. Okay, thank you. So, Avril, do you want to abstain then? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, Avril is abstaining. Okay, yeah. So, All right, Jeremy, can I see the agenda? Is there anything else? Yeah. So, hold on. Motion carries, though, like you said. Yeah. Mm hmm. So the open meetings law amendment, which we had a public hearing about, uh, was not on the calendar. Um, that was a big mistake on our part. Um, but the agenda, there was an agenda on our website. Um, do you want me to talk about that at all? Do you want? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll it's... just quickly mention the fact that the um, that there are <clears throat> what is it eight fifty to record the meeting, and if we want it uh, streamed uh, on time. Uh, it's an extra hundred dollars, or is that? Am I close, uh, Jeremy, with those numbers? I think it's one fifty. So, at the exec last executive board meeting, we also had a. So prior to COVID, we had board mem we had our meetings full board meetings recorded, um, and once once we're done with WebEx, so come if you look at my under my report, come June fifteenth, we're not going to be able to meet remotely currently the way we are. Um, for as long as you know they they keep it this way um so we had a meeting with the company that currently re records community board 12's meetings the person who used to record our meetings recommends them they're no longer in the business of recording meetings um and so yeah approximately 850 dollars or, or a little bit more than that maybe i don't yeah hey if you remember i think it was, I think 850, it was 850 for three hours if i if uh yeah hey, correct me if i'm wrong but i think it was 850 for three hours and then anything sure. else that was a dollar uh, 150 uh, an hour which yep. is actually better well <laughs> I think it's a little, little bit more than we used to pay 800 a meeting but you're getting with the extra you're getting with a higher amount you're getting a guaranteed three hours whereas before it was two hours and then maybe you pay for overtime they did shut down on us after two hours once that was the other company this is a new company we met with so I don't know if Al, you had a particular feeling about it or any other member. I think, we, I think we voted against the live streaming because that was an extra $150, I believe. So we voted against that, but uh, we did, we did want to bring before the board, the fact that uh, whether they are, you know, in favor of having it recorded for 850 for three hours. So I guess the real question is, does, does the community board want a video recording of the full board meetings going forward. Is it necessary? I think it's it not, is. Is it necessary, uh, Jeremy? That's all I'm asking. Some, sometimes I think it is necessary because what you may think is mundane one month in a month or two, or maybe even a year from now, when something comes up and somebody's like, oh, I didn't say that, you have it on record that it was said. It's it's good for review. Yeah, we 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 try to always audio record as a backup, um, and it's not required. Um, but I think many members, as you're hearing, would agree that it, it is helpful. So isn't it cheaper to just audio record, Jeremy? Yeah, but then somebody oh, yeah, can de somebody can deny it's their voice if if it's videoed. You see in 
them actually talking uh, okay. along with the with what they're saying. All right. I mean, and one thing I spoke with Al about is because we have uh, funds until uh, we have some funds until the end of the, the year until June 30th is the end of this fiscal year. I say, why don't we, why don't we do it? With the exception of the live streaming, because uh, I, one thing I would ask Senator Biagi that I didn't is there's now talk of making live streaming illegal because of what happened in Buffalo. Um, so I don't want to encourage any nefarious activities regarding that. I think we had, we again, we have money that either we spend it or we lose it. So, and that was the reason we figured for, you know, for the remainder of the year, since we have the money at this point, we could, uh, we could uh, have it taped, you know, until the money runs out. Once the money runs out, we'll decide on it again. Yeah, yeah but I'm only also in, I'm also in favor of uh, doing the two camera system and having editing. I know we used to have it before, and it looked very nice when you go back to the to to review the the video. You know, it would show Bernadette Ferreira speaking. She's the um, education committee chair, and it, it divided into section. It was edited a lot of t uh, uh, some of the portions that were that nothing was going on was cut off, which was very nice. Instead of just having the live streaming, which is much cheaper, it's like half price. So it's either, you know, 1500, 1600, but we have something more professional that we can also go back to and review at any time. Um, I know we used to have the edits, but it was at half price, but now we don't have that company. That company went out of business or something. So uh, maybe because I guess they were given it at half price. I'm not sure. But the, what, what they were, they were having, they were struggling. That company was struggling to get camera people to actually follow through and do it. Um, so the other thing is, so we have the money till June 30th. Do we want to entertain doing some committee meetings because we have Harriet? You're, Harriet, can you unmute yourself? We we should have sufficient funds uh, for committee meetings. We don't have any committee meetings this month or June because it starts I, I, June 15th. I think, I think that might be a mistake unless you could tape them all. If you don't do them all, then it's not fair to do some. So how do you pick and choose which ones you're going to do? So either we do them all or we do none. And uh, you know, if we're going well, to, we if, we're going to if we're going to have it edited, it's going to cost us fifteen hundred dollars a session, as opposed to eight fifty. Uh, do we have enough money to last us at the end of the year? Extra money? Yes, yes, we have enough money. So we can do fifteen hundred dollars and uh, run it to the end of the year. Yes. Okay. And then it's in your, the ball's in your court. Whatever the uh, Oh, Al, be, be, Al, just one second. When you say at the end of the year, Jeremy and Harry are saying about the end of fiscal year, which means June. We're not talking about September, October, November, and December. Okay. That's well, the, the, you're okay. talking about, you're talking about next month? <laughs> yeah, June, June is all we could do it for. I would say in person June 15th to the end of the month. So we can do it June 15th. Then all of a sudden we go into another fiscal year? Yes. Yeah, it's July yes. 1st is the yeah, start that's of the exactly next fiscal how it year. Works. I mean, we, we, we'll have money then too, as far as I know. But, you know, we'll, let's, I, I think June is a, a, is a bellwether, a litmus test. Do we like it? Is it worth it? Well, we can do it in June since we have the money for June. Then I would move that we move, we, we do videotape it with the uh, editing in June since we have the money. And then we'll visit it again to see if we have enough money. I need to see the budget to see if we have enough money to, Continue it for the whole uh, next fiscal year. I like that plan. Now. I agree. I agree with that. I second that. Okay. So, a motion by Al to video record our meetings in June. With editing. All, with editing. With editing. All in person meetings in June. Uh, Bernadette seconded, including editing. Anything else? Any other discussion? Anyone? I, I have a, Jeremy, I have a question with yep. regards to this. Um, uh, I seem to remember that 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 it came from the borough president's office that we would still have a choice if we wanted to have in person meetings or virtual meetings. Has that um, has that decision been squashed or um... so right now, Bernadette? I believe it's in person meetings, but I was talking to uh, the borough president's office today, and they said they may rescind that, so it would go virtual again. But uh, right okay. now, it's uh, it's supposed to be in person. Our next meeting is supposed to be in person. 
Thank you for that clarity. All right. Yeah, right. Yeah, just so if I can give me two, three minutes just to clarify. So the state open meetings law was amended by the governor with the last budget, state budget, to and I emailed the board about this. Um it, it right now we have to meet, we have to have a quorum in person. Uh, we have to first of all, we have to vote and approve it if we want to do this. It's an option. But the only options are, and we have to probably decide tonight. Um, the option is you have to have a quorum in person. Once that quorum is established, then, you know, Johnny Smith, who is sick tonight, but really needs or wants to be at that meeting, can call in and they have to show their video. They can't do audio only. It has to show their video. Um, and yeah, I mean, the public would ideally be able to take part, but technologically, I don't know how that would work. But Jeremy, we talk- you have a town hall to discuss that first. What's that? We had to have a town hall to discuss that first before we. Well, we had we had a public hearing that okay. you know we had a public hearing okay. at six o'clock. Um, you know, one member of the public wasn't happy about it, um, and I don't blame them. Right, we forgot to put it on the calendar. Um, I did put it on social media. Um, it was emailed out to the board and then late to the public. Um, the get the, the biggest thing is this was designed. Hopefully, it does get changed, like Al said, because. Even Tom Lucchini agreed with me. The way this was done was, or it, it seemed like the intent was to stop us from doing remote remote meetings or pretend like they never existed. Just, you know, just for the sake of brevity, the next meeting will be uh, in person. Yes. Until un, until further notice, if the, if the uh, borough president's office changes that, we will let everybody know. All right. Let's so, move, yeah, let's move on. Yeah, we'll yeah, all yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, and then Al, you have another executive board meeting scheduled for June 16th. And that's also for attendance issues. Correct. Because we're looking at committee meetings now. We think we're done with the full board unless there's some absences tonight. And then, so, uh, just uh, Jeremy, Al, I, I know uh, we had the public hearing today, but that's, it's, uh, this is something that I'm passionate about. If someone can't make it to the meeting, I feel like, all right, they can't make it, that's sick, whatever, they can dial in. But now we have to make a decision if we if we should allow that or not allow it. I think we should, but we should limit it since we have to have a quorum in person before the online folks can even be counted towards anything. So when, during the public hearing, I had suggested, what if we allow um, for a virtual option, but only twice a year? And that would include even committee meetings or, you know, two general meetings and two committee meetings. And once you burn through those two, then any absence would be counted against you. That was 1 of the options that I had suggested. Uh, I think I that had... might that might come from the borough president's office. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but they may turn around and say, no, you have to have it in person. Um, you can't, you can't live stream it. Al. It's it's Tom Lucania since you've mentioned me. There you go, Tom. How are you? Of course. Thank you. Good, e- good evening, everyone. I I will be brief. <laughs> Jeremy has explained it, uh, you know, well. But just first of all, it's not the borough president's decision to make or change the date of the state of emergency. As was said, the state of the emerg- state of emergency does does expire on June the fourteenth. So anything after June fourteenth, as of now, has to be either in person or as Yahe was talking about, hybrid. But in order for the board to do anything like that, the board has to put a resolution together outlining exactly how you would do a remote meeting. Yahe could make that suggestion and the board can debate that su- suggestion as part of a resolution. But that resolution has to be uh, uh, put before the board, obviously before the board meeting so people understand what they what they would be voting on. But given that you don't have a resolution and these are just questions right now for your June meeting, you are at this point, uh, I'll use the word stuck with having your meetings in person. Now, do I think that the state of emergency may be moved to later in the month? Uh, It's possible. I can't see it changing uh, with the state of the numbers on COVID right now. Uh, But some boards are taking some actions by moving their meetings earlier in the month prior to the 14th so that they are uh, covered by remote meetings. Um, so there are some options out there for you when you're preparing your calendar for next for next month. But as soon as I know, as, as Jeremy knows, uh, I will get it to him. 
I will follow up with the state next week and see if I can get at least a feeling from them as to what they think. But if you want to do a hybrid, the hybrid resolution needs to be prepared. And I think uh, very honestly, it would probably have to be part of the public of, of a public hearing so the public can see what you are, are proposing. So if the meeting in <clears throat> excuse me, if the meeting in June is <clears throat> is in person, then you have July and August to prepare a resolution for hybrid meetings if you choose to do that for September. Tom, um, what's the latest date we can submit our hybrid proposal? Is there a latest date? No, there is no late date because if you're going to have your meeting remotely in June, you don't have to do anything at all. So after that in June, you can, you know, have a, a meeting in, you know, amongst a committee meeting, executive committee meeting in, in, in July and put together a resolution, right. put together your plan as to how you want to do remote. There are uh, templates out there that I think Jeremy has probably had um, emailed to him as well that you can use for uh, at least discussion amongst your uh, committee members. So, Tom, the so we have we don't have. I thought the deadline was originally in June. You're saying we have the, jet, the deadline. The deadline moves with that with that date. But if you're going to do in person, you don't have to do anything. The, yeah, hybrid, no, the hybrid meeting resolution has to be passed once the state of emergency has been lifted. So right now it was June 9th originally. Now it's June 14th. It could be later. So if you're having a meeting in person in June, then you can you can have a resolution for September as to how you want to move forward from that point on. Okay. And also understand that this is a two year um, piece of legislation that expires right. in 2024. That's what I wanted to know. Okay, great. 24. Great. Thank you for the clarification, Tom. Okay, okay, so Jeremy, what are we going to do? I mean, you, you can discuss this offline or whatever, but so we need we'll to put together. Discuss. We'll put together a resolution, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's you want to help me with that, right? Sandy was interested too, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. All right, so moving on then, uh, treasurer's report. Unless you're done now, or unless you have something else, Al. Veronica. Hi, everyone. I'm still waiting for some information from the BP's office to finalize the treasurer's report. I'm going to reach out to them again tomorrow. Um, once I have that information, I'll get it to the board office and we'll get it out to the board members. Thank you, Veronica. I look forward to seeing it. You're welcome. Is Hazel still in? Secretary's report? Yeah, I'm still Hazel here. here. So, review. Yep, I can hear you. Okay, so um, hopefully everybody had a chance to review um, the minutes for April's meeting. And I'd like to make a motion to accept the full community board 11 board meetings for April 2022. I second it. Thank you. Who seconded? Shrado. Shrado. Okay, Thanks. Anyone um, opposed? Any do discussion? We have any discussion? Any discussion? All right. No discussions? Do we have any abstentions? There you go. Do we have anybody opposing? So the motion carries. Thank you very much. I just want to wish everybody a happy and especially a safe Memorial Day weekend. And I want to thank all of our service men and women, past, present, and of course, future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hazel. Okay. Um, my report. So, in person meetings, we've already talked about that. Um, I did publish my, uh, I did publish my. Mr. Manager's report for April. Um, I've been working on my my May one. We did get somebody who thanked me for Yankee tickets. I had a few to give out last minute, um, but luckily they were used. Um, 
people actually showed up that I gave those out to. Uh, I mentioned a, um, a, a citation we gave to Sergeant Pasolacqua at the 49 Precinct Council breakfast. That was Chris Kirk's idea. Uh, Sergeant Pasolacqua helps us remove derelict vehicles from our public streets, and he does an outstanding job with that. Um, and then some other, there's nothing of major importance I, I need to talk to you about right now. Um, unless anybody has questions, like ideally, you know, we save it for the end. Okay, I will share the screen again, I'm sorry. Stop doing that. Uh, committee reports. David Levitt, we had a bylaws committee meeting. Yes. The, the bylaws committee met on uh, May 12th. At the last full board meeting, the chairperson asked that the bylaws committee meet and consider a change to the bylaws so that the committees would not be required uh, to meet each month. So we, we struck uh, a section of article five, section three, which requires standing committees to meet each month between September and June. In addition, the bylaws committee felt that the section related to removal of members that was that considered absences from committee meetings should also be changed since we didn't know how many times in a board year the committees would be meeting so the minutes were published about a week ago and all the details are on the board's website and the committee is unanimously recommending changes to Article 3, Section 4A, Article 3, Section 4A2, and Article 5, Section 3. Does anybody have any questions or discussion about the motion? And a second is not necessary because it came out of committee. I guess um, I have a quick question about the proposal to change the amount of absences counted against a person because we don't know how many times we meet is that what i, I can you clarify that david yes jeremy while i'm uh, answering oral's question would you be able to bring up the bylaw minutes on the screen i think it would be helpful to have the text so article 3 section 4 a 2 says that one reason for removal from the community board is three non-excused consecutive absences or five total non-excused absences from committee meetings. That's what Jeremy just put up on the screen. So since we didn't know how many times a committee would meet, we thought it would be best to limit that to three non-excused absences in the period between September and June. Because if a committee met less than five times and somebody wouldn't reach the, the threshold for possible removal, but they would still hobble the committee's work because they wouldn't have attended the meeting. Does that clarify it, Oral? It does clarify it, but it's still ambiguous to me because, I mean, if you're saying, you know, three consecutive and five total that that's the current language what we're right. proposing the change yes. is to three non-excused absences from committee meetings is a is is a possible reason for removal from the full board okay because the chair and the vice chair of the board have specifically made attendance at full board meetings and committee meetings to be a priority. Because as I understand it, and Yahe and Al can correct me if I'm wrong, when there are people appointed to committees and they don't attend the meetings, there are many times when the committees cannot meet their quorum requirements so they cannot conduct business. And this hasn't been happening just sporadically. This has been happening month after month. So, you, so you're assuming that you will probably meet at least, a committee will meet at least three times. 
I would I would think that a standing committee would have business to to meet at least three times between September and the end of June. If right. not, then maybe we right. should consider them not being a standing committee. Uh, understood. Understood. Um, okay, I, I I see the logic there. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions or discussion on the the motion? It's Ken. Yes, yes Ken. It's Ken. Yeah, I have a question. Right now, you're doing three non-excused, non-excused absences. Why did you? Why didn't you put five non-excused absences, five total absences, and make it parallel to the to the to the the to the requirements for the full board meetings for the committee meeting? We were really discussing the two issues as separate. We weren't discussing the full board attendance. The, so we, we weren't considering it to be uh, that, it, that it needed to be linked in any way. And after a good amount of discussion, the, the committee thought that the lower number would be helpful in keeping the committee's work on track because this really needs to be coupled with counseling of the, the, the member who's not attending the meeting uh, and then finally, you know, possible removal. So we thought the lower number would would keep the committees on track with their work rather than than going with the higher number of five. Yeah, but my problem is that when you do it this way, you're in a sense you're telling people you got to go to more committee meetings than to full board meetings. That's the message you get from 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 not having the same number on them. And I just thought that we wanted to have it, that the full board meetings were at least, if not more important than the committee meetings. You're doing the opposite way here. And I'm sorry I didn't bring this up earlier. Do you understand my point? That That's an interesting point. Uh, and I think at this point, I would ask uh, Yahe and or Al to comment on, on this issue because they're closer to the to the attendance and, and, and to the committee chairs as to how this issue has come up over the last year or two. Let me say something now, yeah, let Yahe uh, um, chime in. Uh, it's only that we figured three because we're not gonna be meeting, they don't have to meet every month. So a committee may meet seven times, six times, depending on the need. There's no reason for a committee to get together that there's nothing to discuss. So this way we felt three would be a little more appropriate than than five since they may not meet five times. That was the only, uh, but again, it's still open for discussion and uh, that can still be changed. Yahe? Actually, it's Ken. Ken, you, you still have a problem with it? Okay. Al, are you addressing me or Yahe? That, that was me, Oral. No, no, I know Oral, but I, I, I think know. that I wanted to hear Yahe's take on it because you know he was involved. So I don't. Is he still in? Stop sharing the screen. Hold on. He's still in, but he maybe maybe well, stepped away. Is that okay? Is, May I say something? Yeah. V, go ahead. I, my public safety committee has had problems having forums for quite a few months. The last couple of meetings, we were lucky to have a forum. We couldn't vote on anything. That that was a big problem. And I've said it since I joined the board. When you join the board, you supposedly have gone to committee up to the board meetings ahead of before. So you know that going on the board means that you have to commit yourself to committees and to board meetings. So there shouldn't be a reason why people are so hesitant to uh, put this into place. You have to. You're on a committee. You should be able to make the time for that committee unless there's extenuating circumstances. That's just my opinion. Why should we have it at five for the full board? Why don't you put it at three for the full board also? If I may say something, Ken, the full yeah. board will meet every month. So right. that's a given. Whereas the committee meetings would be as needed. And I think that's why the numbers are the way they mm -hmm. are. It would make more sense. So, so building off what Sandy is saying is that, yes, in effect, we are saying explicitly that 
we are being stricter with committee attendance because the trade-off being committees will only meet when they have business to conduct. That means you are expected to be at every meeting. So the threshold for consideration for removal is lower. Three meetings instead of the five for the full board. Yeah, I, I think I, I think and I think David is is correct in his logic there. I understand yeah. that I am Ken, I'm just, Ken, I'm just pointing if out. I just Ken, if I just may I say Yahi proposed something that I initially thought was a good idea, but in practical so he's proposed fifty percent of meetings missed, but when you think about it, a committee could have more than one meeting a month. So you can't really gauge that fifty percent mark, whereas like Sandy said, you have we're supposed to meet ten months out of the year. And you know that we we our, the charter mandates that we, we meet 10 months out of the year. That, that was the other proposal, Ken, was to consider a percentage. But when we, when we examined that carefully, we found that if we use the percentage of the number of meetings, the number of committee meetings, we would have to wait until June 30th to determine how many times a particular committee met and then determine what that percentage was and whether or not the member went beyond that threshold for consideration for removal from the board. And that um, makes it impossible for the executive board, for the officers to counsel the, the member to attend, because by then the committee's work has already been so disrupted, either because they didn't have a quorum or because they weren't able to meet at all. And, and this way, if a committee met in September, October, November, and a member did not attend those meetings, the executive board can go to that committee member and say, you didn't attend, you need to attend, this is important. If the person attends, then the problem is solved. If the person doesn't attend, then it's additional counseling, would you like to be on a different committee? And then if that doesn't work out, then it's consideration for removal from the board. Okay. Thank you. Again, the wording is unexcused. So again, if there's something pressing that they call up and they're excused, that doesn't count. So it's unexcused. C correct. Um, but I, I just want to clarify, and Tom Lucania can correct me if I'm wrong, that the attendance records for the for the board uh, members are all sent to the borough president's office. I know at least for the full board. And I don't know if the borough president considers the distinction between excused and non-excused absences. Um, I, we, I, have a, wait, I have a question, though. Um, reducing the number of committee meetings, is that really fair to the community? I mean, we may not have an issue to meet about, but what if somebody from the community wants to come to one of our committee meetings because they have an urgent issue that they want the board to address. Hazel, so if I'm that so were the I'm I'm a little confused right now. And because before I I I hardly ever before I got the members that I have now, I hardly ever had a for uh, a quorum, but I still had my meetings because there was still issues that needed to be discussed, even though, you know, I couldn't vote on anything, but. You're, you're right, Hazel, and, and I'd like to just read the, the change, uh, the exact wording of the change, which is one sentence. So the new proposed wording would be, quote, standing committee shall meet only when they have business to conduct or when the committee chairperson determines that there is a need to discuss items of importance to the community, close quote. So if if members of the public are in contact with the community board and the committee chairperson wants to meet, they absolutely can meet. And just so everybody's aware, Yahe's having connection issues. He texted me. I'm sorry, Tom, were you trying to say something about the attendance? Yes, um, we, we obviously maintain the attendance at full board meetings but we when we have our conversations with the, the chair and the dm regarding reappointments they usually fill us in on someone who may have not been active on committees or 
if they were active or if they weren't active, if there was a reason why they were inactive. So while we don't monitor every every committee of each of the 12 boards, usually in our discussions, the chair or the DM would tell us that this person has not been uh, fully engaged um, and that you that does go into the conversation we have with the borough president. Thank you. I do. And, when, and when people are called before the executive board, I do inform uh, Mr. Lucania. Hazel, did, did, did we address your question? Um, yeah, you did, David. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I, just, can I just say something? It's Joanne. I'm on the bylaws committee. I just wanted to point out that that's actually what we have been doing when we haven't had me. We're not reducing the amount of meetings. We're just putting it in the bylaws, what we've been doing all the time, which is if there is no business at all to conduct, we won't have a meeting. So it's not like we're reducing. We're just codifying it. Are there any other questions or discussion before we take a vote? Well, uh, David, are we actually voting tonight? I thought well, we have to I'm wait. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. We're not voting tonight. According to our bylaws, the, um, the requirement when a bylaws change is made is that the change is presented to at the full board meeting. And then the vote is taken the next month. So thank you, Jeremy. We will be voting on this change at the June meeting. Excellent, David. Thank you. And we'll have another opportunity for questions and discussion then. So that that concludes my report. I just want to thank David and the members of the uh, the, the committee for their hard work. I know it's uh, it's time consuming and it takes a lot of dedicated work. So I, David, I thank you and and the members of your committee. Thank you. I, I do a lot of the talking at the full board meeting, but it is a, it's a truly a team effort. So I appreciate everyone's participation. Thank okay, you. Unless there's any other questions, uh, we will move on to Joanne with the nominating elections committee. Mute myself. I unmuted myself. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And also, Jeremy, if I've uh, made any errors or I leave anything out, please chime in. Thank you. Okay. Tonight, the nominating committee is seeking additional nominations for the positions of chairperson and for vice chairperson. The voting will take place at the June full, uh, full board meeting. At that and time, right? yes. And secretary. And sec I'm sorry. And secretary. Uh, voting will take place in June. Um, and there will also be an opportunity for write-in candidates uh, on in June. Uh, so far, um, for chairperson, Yahe Obeid was nominated and he accepted. Uh, for, for vice chair, Al D'Angelo was nominated and he accepted. And for secretary, Hazel was nominated and accepted. So are there any more nominations at this point for chairpersons? I'd like to nominate Bernadette Farrar for chairperson. Okay. Can I have Bernadette. a second? Okay. Bernadette, do you accept? Well, hold on. It has to be seconded to. Oh, he did second. I think it was um, It was seconded, but I didn't hear who it was. Yeah, who seconded? We have to know. I second it. Avril Francis. Okay. Avril Francis. Okay. All right. Bernadette. For Bernadette. Okay. Well, does now we now Bernadette is she in? Does she accept? Yeah, Bernadette, do you accept? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. For vice chair, Al D'Angelo was nominated and he accepted. Are there any more nominations for um, vice chairperson? I'd like to nominate Oral vice chair. Okay. Right. I second it. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Now, um, there, um, well, you have to ask me if I, I'm oh, yes, to, do you uh, accept? <laughs> yeah, I, I really, oh, I really well, it's going to accept. I really appreciate you guys, um, putting me in there, but, um, I'm really swamped with, um, okay. other work. I, I can't, I can't dedicate the time I would love to dedicate, um, to, to the position right now. So, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, well, got too much on his table. <laughs> I, I do, I do, I do. I have a lot. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm an architect. I'm a practicing architect. I work for the city right now. I'm doing so many things. I'm a, you know, direct. I run a whole, whole, twenty person unit. I, I don't have to. I can't. No. The, the important thing, thing you, is you admit to it. 
So thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so we can continue. Thank you, Oral. Um, for secretary, are there any uh, additional? Hold on, Joanne. Just yes. might make sure there are no any other. Oh, are there any yes. other nominations for vice chairperson? Sure. Okay, if there are no more nominations, we'll close that. Now, are there any additional nominations for the position of secretary? If there are no more nominations, that will be closed. Okay, so um, I that will be the end of the, the nominating committee of presentation. And happy Memorial Day, everybody! So hold on, just, take, sure. just so everybody remembers, um, our bylaws were changed what, last year, year before, I think it's year 2020, that every candidate must provide. Ah. I'll, just read, I'll just read the actual bylaws. So they must provide a written or oral statement to the committee board at least 72 hours prior to each election, indicating the, why they seek the elected position. So that means tonight is your chance to present orally. If you don't want it, you can do a written statement, but it has to be done 72 hours prior to the June election. Jeremy. If it is done 72 hours before, will the board members be able to read whatever they wrote before the meeting? Yeah, no, as soon as I get it, I will send it out to everybody. Okay, just wanted to. I, I did forget that with modern day technology, somebody could record themselves orally and I could email that link or whatever they send me along. So that is possible too. Thank you. And then, um, and then I don't see anything in the bylaws. I, I don't know if I should ask this question. Normally we do paper ballots in person. I know some board members in the past, they wanted a lot of electronic stuff. I know we've, we should have the option for electronic ballot and, in, and paper ballot. Um, does the board feel either, either way? Because it's very easy to do it electronically for, for me and then probably some of you. The, the nominating committee supervises the election. Why don't we ask yeah. them to lead us on this? Also, yeah. Jeremy, if we're going to meet in person. If, if, we're, we're, meeting, meet, if we're meeting in person, we should person, be able to It should be paper ballot. Paper ballot. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm aiming at. Just want to put that out there. Not unless okay. there's a change. The electronic would be if we're not. I mean, obviously, it's uh, the paper right. ballots. Yeah. Right, the paper ballots if we're in person, electronic ballots if we are going to meet uh, via WebEx. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds good okay. to me. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so then that concludes your report, I yes, assume? That concludes questions. my report. Thank you. Are, are there any questions? Just... Nope. Okay. Agenda. Um, Parks and Recreation, Lisa Soto could not be here tonight. Um, she had an unexpected, um, thing. So let's see there. They voted in committee. I know Debbie's here from that committee. I think Christian's here from that committee. There was a motion of no objection regarding the Eastchester playground design as presented by the New York city parks department. Um, unless anybody has any questions about that. Um, the meeting was recorded. Uh, Parks Department came is pretty quick and brief. We'll take a vote. Okay. Uh, any ob any objections or abstentions? So a motion of no objection regarding the Eastchester playground design as presented by the New York City Parks Department at the Parks Committee this past month. It's unanimous. All right. Uh, I don't know if Yahe is still in leadership uh, or Veronica. I don't remember if there's anything specific to cover with leadership. I am I waiting. On I don't one, know of anything. I'm waiting on one committee to to publish the calendar for June. Um, I would ideally like all the dates set up 
once the calendar is set, it's kind of hard to, it's more cumbersome to finagle it. So I need a, a date for the ethics committee when you get a chance. Health and social services, uh, Sandy, do you want to talk about this stop the bleed yes. training that was? I will. Thank you, Jeremy. I received a email from uh, John Doyle at Jacoby Hospital. Jacoby has had several workshops with various community boards with called Stop the Bleed. What it does is it trains people how to uh, react and help to stop, say, bleeding or people who are in distress before the EMTs get to the, you know, the area where the problem occurred. I've had a course in it. It's very good. And I asked, and Jeremy sent out to everyone in the on the board if they were interested. Only one person got back to me, and that was Hazel. If if you want, you know, get back to me, then I could find out like or set up a day and time, and it will probably be at Jacoby Hospital in one, one of their meeting rooms. Oh, wait. Do you know what day? day no, that's it. Before I even make plans, I have to know how many people are really want to do it. If it's five or six, fine, I will let John know, and then we will set up a day and time. I, I did that prior to the pandemic. It was an awesome program. Right. It was. I did it also. It was wonderful. Uh, Sandy, we remember we also did it at the health fair. We had them at the health yes. fair. I'll send so, you an email. So, you know, just get to me, let me know, and then I will let John know. So no matter what, it's going to be in June. It may be in the summer. I don't know. But. I mean, I would do it again. I don't know if anybody else would, if you want to refresh a course. But it, it's a good technique to know. I'm interested, Sandy. All right, fine. Just send me the emails. Thank you. So that I know who's coming. And then I have your email address. So just, you know, get to me. Ask the board for my email address. If you don't have it, just let me know. Yeah, just, you know, let them know. All right. Thank you, Sandy. Anything else? You're quite welcome. No, that's fine for now. Okay. Hazel, housing? I don't know if you're... Hazel, my hat's to the lead. Um, um, no, I'm, 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 I'm okay. still here. Um, we, didn't we didn't have a meeting this month, but we are going to have uh, a meeting in June, and we're bringing back um, the person that did the the presentation for first time home buyers um, for people of color. So, um, yeah, so that's what's going to happen in June. Uh, Veronica, public safety. Hi, we had our meeting um, this month. We're going to be having another meeting next month. We're attempting to get the Pep Boys. From the park to see if they could come in and let us know what safety measures they're going to be putting in place. I'll be able to confirm that once um, I get confirmation that they're going to be joining us. Now you said the PEP officers. Is that what you said? The pe parks enforcement police think, patrol. Yeah, the parks enforcement because people were concerned about the safety issues with the barbecues um, along the parkways. So we're going to get them in, try and get them in to see if they can tell us what kind of measurements they're going to be put in place. Okay. Um, sanitation committee, Averill. If you want, you move in your meeting to the oh, first. Jeremy, meeting. I was on mute, Jeremy. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, so we're in agreement to move the meeting for the first Tuesday. Yeah, and I don't know if you saw my email from Ms. Rojas. They have, before they commit to coming to your next meeting, they want to know um, what specifically. If anything, you or any members of the public would like to be spoken about regarding the Palm Parkway. No, I didn't see the email, but I would check it um, after the meeting. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, so if anybody has any questions, please, yeah, let, reach out to us. And then transportation is going to meet the second Monday in June. We have the Metro North uh, project, people coming to speak, not about the art panel stuff that we had, that you know, consumed our mean last month. This is more about the actual um, stations and the whole layout, the, the plan for that, art aside, but you know, questions about art should come up. And the Bronx DOT division, or just DOT, they may have people from downtown. There's a bus re redesign plan, a uh, lane plan for East Gun Hill Road. So they're looking at basically creating two dedicated bus lanes on East Gun Hill Road. You know, this is what they've been doing throughout the city. Um, for the most part, they started on Fordham Road, right? They created bus only uh, lanes. They're looking at doing that on East Gun Hill Road, which is the northern border of our eastern, northeastern district, part of our district. And is there any other committees that needs or wants to say anything? Committee, chair people? Uh, yes. Not Yes, Go ahead. Oh, Brandon, I'm sorry, you want me to put you on the agenda? I forgot. That's okay. That's okay. Um, the uh, Education, Culture, and Youth Services Committee did not meet last month, but we will be meeting on um, Wednesday, June 1st. The guest speaker is to be announced. I'm still waiting for a confirmation. Um, and I, I guess that's about it. Um, just uh, again, want to. Uh, congratulate all the honorees of the, or the recipients of the Yankee Leadership Award, and I do hope we get a group picture and with their awards and uh, um, have some sort of, uh, you know, um, so, you know, public confirmation of all the, the the honorees. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. We definitely want more applicants for next year. Right, we can start early, right? We do our application is on our website. We start now. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's set a date for the fall, give a deadline for the fall. And but in the meantime, people should apply. It's on our website. That's the youth leadership award. We get every year the Yankees gives us five chances to nominate people. Uh yes. youths from 14 to 20, I think is the current age we do. Yes. So unless there's any questions, we move on to the elected officials. Uh, Tom, are you still here for our president's office? Yes, uh, yes, I am. Uh, I will. I will be brief. Um, I've already talked about two of the things I would have mentioned um, if I didn't speak about them earlier. But just uh, first of all, to once again, as I always do, thank all of you for participating in these virtual meetings. I, I know they can be difficult, but. Um, uh, we do thank you for your, your constant participation and your dedication. Uh, the latest borough president newsletter, I, I believe I sent out to everybody earlier this week. Uh, and it's filled with uh, information on events and uh, news releases from the borough president. Uh, secondly, I want to thank those who participated in the Bronx Week uh, community board uh, event at uh, Borough Hall. Uh, we honored the, in your case, four board members who uh, were, uh, who are the longest serving, uh, basically uh, from the 1900s. Uh, so it was uh, Rabbi Fuchs, uh, David Levitt, um, David Levitt, uh, Ken, Gelnick. Ken Gelnick, and uh, Joe Thompson. So for those who were not able to pick up their, their certificates, I do have them. And maybe if you are in person in, um, June, I will be able to hand those out who are not able to pick it up. Uh, reappointment letters will be going out uh, hopefully by next week. And new appointment letters will be going out the middle of to the latter part of uh, June. Uh, and finally, I know uh, some folks have been having difficulty with the sexual harassment training uh, links. Uh, that does not come from our office. It comes from DCAS. Um, I sent down another bunch today of folks who had issues uh, from not only 11, not, not only from board 11, but from other boards who have been having difficulty uh, linking uh, through their computers or their or their iPads. Uh, and um, if again, if anybody is having a problem, there is a help 
uh, link, I think, on the email. So if you try the help link that goes to the DCAS help desk, uh, that has resolved some problems for some board members and, you know, in other boards. So if you can try that as well, as well as letting me know, uh, I just don't want to keep resending you the link if the link itself is not working for some reason off of your off of your computer. Tom, uh, with that, yes. No, I was just going to say, finish up, but I still can't get on. I know. I was talking and I emailed David today. So I know you've oh, been okay, working with thank David. You. Uh, but I think yeah. that's it. So uh, thank you I, very much. Tom, I'm also one saying. of the people that can not get in either. Who's 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 me? Debbie. Okay. Debbie. Okay. I'll uh, I'll check tomorrow. Tom, but quick check, question. Check, I'm sorry. Before you do that, uh, Debbie, if you look on there and try the help link first, because it has helped some other folks. If the help link doesn't work, uh, let me know. But I'll check with you with them again tomorrow as well. Yeah. Yes, or so, Tom. A question, okay. Tom. Yeah. Uh, so, what's the difference between the DCAS training and the publicly available? Um, Commission on Human Rights one through the city. Is there a difference? Uh, the, there, I think there's a difference in content, but that is not what the law uh, is requiring uh, folks to take. I okay. know that the I know that the Human Rights one is much easier to to go get through the um, you know their website. It's much uh, quicker to get your certificate. But this is how the legislation was written. And this is what we have to we have to deal with, unfortunately. And this this is the only this is the only um, uh, training that is allowed to be sent to at this point to people's personal emails. If and when we are out of pandemic, that that may be withdrawn. Okay. Yes, Oro, go ahead. So if you work for the city and, and you've taken all, it, all, you all need I need is all I need is a copy of the certificate you receive from them and you're fine. Excellent. Thank you. And just to be clear, it's the city training. If you work for the yes. state or some other yes. agency, Correct. it does not yes, qualify. For the Correct. City, yes. Correct. Sometimes people reach out to me. They want to know if it, their state one works. No, your, job, your personal job, unless you work for the city in New York, it doesn't qualify. Anything else, Tom? Tom, anything else? Are you good? Okay. Guess that's it for the borough president's office. I believe uh, we have council member Velasquez's office present. Um, Nick, fine. are you still on? Yeah, this is Nick Rolison. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, very good. Thank you uh, for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. I'll be brief. Um, just wanted to say hello, let everybody know that uh, in the city council, as you mentioned earlier in the in the meeting, it is budget season. This is the end of the fiscal year, so we have to pass the city budget uh, by the end of June, and we're working on a lot of uh, important issues for the community. Um, I could go on for hours, but I'll just point out two things. First of all, um, we were very excited to do uh, participatory budgeting for the first time ever in Council District 13, which is where over the last six months we were collecting ideas from residents of the neighborhood on how to spend a million dollars of capital. Um, and we had a lot of people submit ideas. We had a lot of energy. We had nearly a thousand people cast ballots, which was great for a first uh, first run of the process. Um, I'm very excited that uh, the, the water fountains at Pelham Parkway one, I know it was a popular project. So that's going to be uh, something that we put into the budget this year. And, um, you know, if people are interested in that process, I would just say to stay involved with our office, keep in touch with us. We're going to um, begin the process again in September where we're going to be collecting ideas from the public. So if there are um, big capital projects that you feel very passionate about, you know, please let us know about those and we'll try to get them into next year's process. Also, because uh, I will just briefly mention that um, since we were talking about the issues of security and violence, um, I know that a, a big uh, push that the council member is going to be making in this year's budget is particularly around public safety. Um, we had a lot of incidents with Jacoby Hospital earlier in the year, and we're working with Jacoby Hospital to make sure that they get the funding that they need um, to harden their, their campus, make sure they have the security they need to make sure that their workers are safe. We're also working with NYPD to try to get them more um, Harbor Patrol boats. We're trying to create a new Harbor Patrol um, uh, unit. Um, a lot of 
party boats and uh, other boats in the uh, in the waters, particularly in the summer, are causing a lot of issues with sound and other illicit activities. So we're hoping to um, increase funding there to the NYPD to make sure that our, our communities are safe and, and livable. Um, I also just want to um, say that uh, you know we're available for you know to to talk about anything at any time. Um, our offices are open. We're in person. You can come um, say hello to us at 3040 East Tremont Avenue. Um, you can email us anytime at district13 at council.myc.gov. I was going to put it in the chat, but the chat's not working. Um, or you can uh, call us anytime, 718-931-1721. And uh, I'll just end by saying I hope everybody has a good Memorial Day weekend. If you serve, thank you. If you know anybody um, who was lost in battle, I just want to say that our hearts are with you this weekend. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nick. Unless there's any questions, we will move on to. I don't know if council member Feliz's office is here tonight. Uh, the mayor's office. Comptroller's office, I believe is here, right? Yes. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is Grim Mayhew. I am from uh, Comptroller Brad Lander's office. We only have 1 update today. Um, it is that on June 7th, we are hosting well, co hosting a virtual property tax and sanitation town hall. Um, it is uh, again virtual. It's, it's it's on June seventh at seven p.m. Um, I will send the link. Oh, I can't put it in the chat. So I'll send it to um, the board. So anyone who's interested can feel free to register. Um, and also, the controller is collecting data on sanitation issues throughout the city, and he has a sanitation survey. So that's on our website as well. Um, if you would like to uh, submit. Uh, a survey on that. So uh, feel free to do that. I will also send that. I'm along to the board as well. Um, again, uh, if you want to ask any questions or if you need any assistance from our office, feel free to contact me. My number is 929-512-1647. Thanks again. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Um, Public Advocates Office could not be here tonight, but they did reach out to me. Bronx District Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. Christina, you're in. Yes, I am. Hi, community board 11. I hope everyone is well um, and happy Memorial Day weekend. I have 1 announcement uh, actually too. I just want to say thank you to all of the community board members, uh, and residents and constituents who donated to our prom suit and dress drives. We were able to collect over 400 pieces to give to young people so that they can attend their prom. So I just want to say thank you and kudos to you if you were able to donate and um, participate in that. Uh, on another note, June is Gun Violence Awareness Month, and we will be hosting a 5K run, walk, and roll on 161st Street and the Grand Concourse beginning at 9 a.m. on Saturday, June 4th. Uh, so please come out, um, support the, the cause, come listen to the stories of survivors and family members of survivors of um, unfortunate gun violence and uh, come bring awareness to it. Um, we'll be there up until about 1130, 12 p.m. Um, there is the Yankee game that day as well, but please come out to, the, to support the cause. You know, it's something that is... Um, uh, happening within our borough uh and i just want to also say thank you to the morris park community association for inviting da clark to speak at their bi-monthly meeting yesterday thank you all thank you, thank you. and uh ocasio cortez's office here is here i believe a represent from her office yes hi everyone um, so my name is Angelica Ramon. I am a constituent liaison at the office of representative Ocasio-Cortez. I am covering for Daisy, which is the field representative since she is partaking in the town hall that's happening today. Um, so before I provide the remarks prepared for today, um, our office wanted to address the recent tragedies that have included two of the most deadliest shootings of 2022 within 10 days. Um, obviously, I wanted to let you all know that we're all heartbroken and the Congresswoman continues to be committed to ending gun violence across the country. Yes, the Congresswoman has voted for the Bipartisan Background Checks Act, the assault weapons ban and ghost guns are guns 
act, um, but more has to be done. And we really need to come together and continue to stress to the Senate to take upon the House passed legislation and really get the votes going. Um, obviously, if you have any questions regarding the specific legislation, you can always feel free to email our office and we can direct you to the legislative team to better understand the legislation that is awaiting to be passed by the Senate. Um, we also wanted to share that we recently received over 5,000 at home COVID tests um, by the state of New York. And over the past several weeks, we have partnered with grassroots community organizations, and we've been able to distribute it amongst the community. Um, like mentioned earlier, we did um, host our town hall today. Um, it was virtual, um, but the Congresswoman discussed federal gun control measures, AAPI heritage much, month and redistricting. Uh, you may want to go on you on YouTube or the Facebook page if you're interested in viewing the town hall. Um, also, the Social Security Administration has a new filter tool for those who wish to check their eligibility for SSI. Um, so if you have any further questions, please let us know. Um, also, our community project funding requests for this year are live on our website. Um, the project requests include over 800 k for expanding Jacoby's SUVs program, 1 million for the Botanical Gardens Worker Center, 1 million for safety improvements for the Westchester Square, and 200,000 um, for Birch Family Services in Pelham Bay to help train their staff in nonverbal communication. Um, there's also the full list that's provided in our site. Um, we also just wrapped up our 2022 Congressional Art Competition. We did receive tons of high schoolers that had amazing artwork, and we will be sharing that with the results with you all soon. Um, and as always, we welcome any questions or comments from our constituents and from you all. Um, so if you have any casework assistance or any questions, please let us know. Um, also, our Bronx office our Bronx Satellite Office is open for walk-ins on Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you for having me and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Um, I don't believe anybody here is, is here from Congressman Bowman's office. If you are, please announce yourself. Do we have anybody? No, State Senator Biagio already spoke. Um, State Senator Bailey, I don't know if we're um, <laughs> um, Mr. Oglevy, I don't know if he's here. Um, I do believe we have somebody from State Senator Rivera's office. Uh, hi, Jeremy. How are you doing? Hey. Go ahead. All right. Who, who, who. Um, so I'll just try and be very brief. Um, so one big announcement was uh, actually today we had we hosted a veterans mixer in for the district, um, commemorated a few veterans who have been exceptional in terms of their community work in the area. Um, we had upwards of 30 people. And while I couldn't be there for uh, personal reasons, my girlfriend had an emergency surgery, but um, I was told it was a lovely event and it was it was nice to see. Um, in terms of <laughs> acknowledging what happened 48 hours ago, you know, it's, um, I think it goes without saying that uh, the senator fiercely advocates for uh, fighting gun violence in the Bronx, but especially in New York State. And um, just on a personal level, it's uh, <laughs> it, it gets tiring to see uh, my own neighborhood um, that I grew up in uh, was actually the site of a mass shooting not too long ago, almost exactly a month ago, and. Um, having those feelings resurface it's um i it's something even I, I i don't know what to say for but um uh senator biagi said it best um there will be a series of bills uh regarding combating gun violence uh, that will be out by the end of the month um any more questions on that and anything else related to uh, constituent services appointments, you can reach out to our office number at 718-933-2034. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. And the center has always been great about doing stuff for veterans. I know 
don't know if the state Senate still does the Veterans Hall of Fame, but every year your office usually reaches out to me if I have anybody in mind. Um, I know I've spoken to Brenda about some of this because it tends to be her district or her area, Van Nest, that um, is part of the center's district, at least currently. I don't know what the lines are changing to. Um, uh, it, still is. it still is. Okay, he's still there? Okay. Assembly member Fernandez, Hasty, Benedetto, or Reyes. I don't know. I don't think any of those are in the meantime. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anybody from those offices? Yes. From okay. uh, Assembly member Karina Reyes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rabbi Lillian Vargas, and uh, we are working beautifully and very hard for the community in the housing issues, FEMA resources, uh, IDA resources. We have uh, gotten over $90,000. Uh, for IDA victims and also for a uh, for SBA, not only for our district but other district that we have help. You're more than welcome to call us if you need any services. I will give you an update list, uh, Ms. Ferrara, regarding the IDA victims and housing, and also the fire. We have place for people with apartments, and we're working very hard on that. Also, uh, you can call the office for any scheduling or appointments at 718-931-2620. And we are in the community to serve all community members, share information with community boards and elected officials. Good evening. Thank you, Rabbi Lillian. Um for all the help you've done for uh, the residents of Van Ness. I, I've been uh, kept apprised. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, any old business? We're done with the elected officials unless I miss somebody. Any old business? I have some old business. I have a question. Yeah, shoot right uh, up. Um, I, I'm just gonna ask you, Jeremy, uh, please, Keep on top of DHS to supply the written written were written answers to the questions that were submitted. Even though the situation has changed, I I think that a lot of people are still waiting for the answers with regards to the um, the single men shelter at twenty uh, the proposed shelter that is now withdrawn from twenty twenty eight White Plains Road. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then attendance, I've gotten everybody if, unless there's somebody else who called in that I didn't catch I have everybody for attendance and then fireworks Chris was able to confirm today that the fireworks the Orchard Beach fireworks will not conflict with our full board meeting in June um, we're we're meeting the second currently we're meeting the second to last week it's always the fourth people get confused they always think it's the last Thursday no we always meet the fourth Thursday of the month which is the 23rd the fireworks are going to be on the 29th, so there's no conflict there. Any other old business, or do we have new business? I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, Monday will be Memorial Day ceremonies at uh, Mars Park, uh, the uh, Peace Plaza at 11 o'clock, and Van Ness at 12. 12 15, Al. <laughs> right. I said 12 15. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it's 12 15. Yes, at Vanest. I said 12. <laughs> Venice Plaza, get there early. So, and I want to wish everybody a happy memorial. Well, a happy Memorial Day. You know, and enjoy your weekend and uh, pray for those soldiers that gave their lives for for our country. Thank you, Al. Yeah, my my, my wife's um, Jeremy. Was Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, Debbie. Debbie. Yeah the the last the last Thursday is the thirtieth, not the 29th. Yes. I said twenty ninth. Well, according to Chris, the fireworks will be on the 29th, and they normally would conflict with ours. Oh, so, all right. So this year it's not uh, Wednesday. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, as long as the 29th holds, yeah, it's not conflicting okay. with us this year. If it's June 29, 2022, that's the day. So it's Wednesday, all right? 
Anything else? Uh, yes, the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance is having their monthly meeting on uh, Monday, June 6, and it will be a fire prevention. So if anybody had missed the Pelham Parkway fire prevention, we will be having that on uh, Monday, June 6, at, starting at 7, 7 p.m. Thank you. And Thank you, Brenda. I will. I had a meeting with Montefiore earlier this week. Uh, they're hoping for September that we can start meeting at Einstein again. Uh, so I expect uh, Chris, maybe tomorrow you can reach out to my Astros and find out if we can meet there on the 23rd. I don't know of any other place that would be able to hold us at this moment. Um, this will be the third time that probably if we're going to go uh, via WebEx, it's going to be uh, canceled for the third time. And then, and then it feels a little bit awkward. So, can we wait until we figure it out if it's going to be WebEx or it's going to be? I mean, I can try. I can try. I can tell him. I can call the guy. But it's going to be the third time that I'm going to cancel with him. I yeah, wanna, I mean, I guess we could we could wait a little bit. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want him to keep the day for us. Meanwhile, he can do business. You might say it's a Thursday. Sometimes they do even graduations on Thursday, especially now in June, May. So, yeah, the problem the problem will be the leadership committee, which meets on the sixteenth. I don't know if Yahe is in again. We can talk about that offline. Okay. So, Al, do you have a motion? You want to make a motion to close the meeting tonight. Need a second. Very I good. <laughs> I third. I fourth. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> have a good weekend. Okay, everyone, everyone. Have, a great, I have a memorable have a good weekend. Good weekend. Have a, good have a great memorial. Have a safe weekend, 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 everyone. Stay have safe. And have everyone. Healthy have a safe weekend. Terrific. And safe. And be safe. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Be safe out there. You guys are pretty good. Nine eleven. And let's hey, let's Joe. pray for our servicemen and women that have given their 